Hey guys, welcome back to another Test and Tune and a product review video on a relatively new, and by relatively new, it's about two weeks old or been available for about two weeks to buy, Breville coffee machine. I thought it'd be relevant because whenever I make a purchase, especially something as expensive as this, I do a lot of research and I try and watch as many customer reviews as I can. And as of right now, whatever the date is, Sunday the 11th of August, there is no customer reviews of this machine. And uh, there's not even anyone talking about it that I think is your average consumer, someone like myself. Uh, and to give you guys a little bit of background on me and why I'm doing a review on a coffee machine, I'm not a coffee expert. Uh, I do enjoy watching videos from James Hoffman and I love the depth of information he can give and I guess how much he loves espresso and how much he effort he puts into his espresso shots and all that sort of stuff, but I don't get that deep. I just drink a lot of coffee. I drink four or five coffees a day. I do have moments where I might have a month or two where I just drink black coffee, and that's when you do sort of put a bit more thought into the espresso shot, but most of the time I'm drinking lattes. They're milk drinks. I love them. I love them a lot. Uh, my coffee machine history. So really, well, probably the last 15 years, Jura's. The, not, well, basically the top of the range, Jura's. Uh, we've, we've currently got a Jura Z9 on the table over there. It's broken, which is why I've sort of impulse bought this. Uh, I will try and fix the Jura. Before that, we had the previous generation Jura, and they're good. When they come out sort of 15 years ago, when they really hit the retail market, I loved the ease for the fully automatic side of it. There was nothing like this in sort of a half automatic machine back then. And when you're making a couple of coffees a day, the Jura was good for speed. However, I don't think they're the best. Not for uh, pure coffee enjoyment, especially once you've had a few sessions with James Hoffman. So anyway, I've ended up with this and I feel like I'm the typical sort of person that's gonna be buying it. Uh, switching between a fully automatic like a Jura, which is a similar sort of money to this, around that $3,000 mark. I think these retail for about three and a half. The Jura's maybe 3,800 for the current Z10. This, you, you can get some deals on them. Uh, we paid around $3,000 for this, a smidge over. Uh, which is a lot of money, but I'm hoping we get the five to 10 years that we normally get out of the Juras. I also repair things myself, which is why I'll be repairing the Jura. I've got a commercial coffee machine that I've bought for work that I've done some repairs on. I've got an idea of what these things are like on the inside, what goes into them, how they do what they do, but I'm not a coffee nerd. Uh, and if you're after a really experienced opinion on coffee, this is probably not it. But if you're thinking about buying one for the home, something for your partner to enjoy and use and just to have as a house coffee machine this is what this is what i'm doing and uh, i will bring my partner in and show you how she's been using the machine as well because we all got to use it we've all got to know how to use it and be able to do what we want make a coffee right let me turn it on the breville or this generation breville and the barista touch i've learned a lot about breville in the last week the barista touch also had this new way of heating it's ready to go it is ready to make a coffee already the touchscreen is brilliant. This was a concern of mine, the responsiveness of the touchscreen. It's good. It doesn't feel like it's a cheap or aged product at all. And let's make a coffee. So, well, actually, before we get into making the coffee, a quick disclaimer. I'm using uh, Lavazia beans. They're not expensive. These are probably six months old. This is the level of coffee I go through. We use a lot. We'll probably use a kilo of coffee a month. And I can't afford to buy really expensive beans all the time, but this makes nice, really nice coffee when you're not using really expensive beans. Although the setup that you go through when you do the first setup and it, um, it dials the coffee in for you, it does remind you that cheap beans are not the way to go. But I, I still think it's good. All right, let's keep going. So we're gonna make a latte. And obviously we've already set up the grind and it's set, currently set to 32. Uh, watching various reviews on the previous generation models, the thicker the grind, it's normally for cheaper beans or older beans, let's say that. But we are running 32, it's a fairly heavy grind, and we just go. Now this has the built-in grinder, the built-in dosing, and the built-in tamper. It's a fairly loud machine, but so was the Jura Z9. So that is the coffee tamped, ready to go. So we'll put it straight into the main section and let me grab a, I'll grab a small glass just so you can see how the shot comes out. Although normally I'll do it straight into the cup that I'm gonna be using to, to drink the coffee in. We're gonna click go and that's gonna start working on the espresso. Now I have double shots. My partner has single shots that you'll see in a moment. And whilst it's doing the espresso, we can get to work on preparing the milk. 
I have my special cow's milk here. And we're going for a bit of a glamour shot watching the espresso come out. So you can see on the display that was a 28 second pour time. The, these brevels, by default, they measure volume. So it's, I assume it's using a set level of pressure and volume to get a desired time of pour. Uh, and it will tell you to adjust the grind if the time of pour is out of what it wants to do or what it recommends to do. Uh, this machine has adjust, or got us to adjust the grind twice. That is something I really like. So I do like watching the James Hoffman stuff and I'll get too into it, and then two months later I've forgotten everything. And I set up the Dura machines once. Once they're set up, I never go and adjust the grind again. This is monitoring what's going through with the beans, how long it's taking to get the desired pour, and it reminds me to make an adjustment, which I really like, and I do think it makes a difference. Okay, espresso is out. Now you can start the milk going beforehand. Uh, I've put a little bit too much milk in, but that's normally what I do, because I have a slightly larger cup, and I'm gonna do a milk on the automatic function. So this is pre-set up for lattes. Uh, it's gonna go 65 degrees Celsius. We'll click go. Now you can click go whilst the espresso shot is still coming out. But um, for the sake of the video, we'll do this. Now if you're keeping track of time, if you're doing one coffee with this machine, I think it's faster than the Jura. The Jura obviously does the espresso shot and the milk all in one go. You've still gotta prep the milk container. You've still gotta clean the milk. Uh, the milk line and everything, and you still got to flush out the milk system with the Jura. With this, you sort of clean on the go, and it does make it a little bit quicker. Now, while that's coming out, I'll get the glass that we're going to put the main shot into. And you can see on the screen, it gives you a target temperature and how close you're getting to that temperature. So we'll put the espresso shot in there. And this is all on the, the default latte settings. I haven't changed anything. Literally turn the machine on, set the machine up for our water hardness, it makes you do that. And then we've set the machine up for the coffee grind or the, the coffee that we're using. This is my uh, morning coffee routine. Nearly there. So we will need a cloth. So you do need a cloth on hand with this machine. Something you don't need with the Jura. With the Jura maintenance and cleaning, we'll always take it over to the um, over to the sink. But we'll pull the milk out. And I did overfill the milk jug. But I'll get you to come in for a bit of a close up on the milk. Like it's it it textures quite well. This is the base settings. The microfoam. It's pretty good. I like it. Right. There's no latte art from me. I don't have a clue. I normally pour it in really quickly and get on with my day. That's it. There's a little bit left in there. Probably put a bit too much milk in. I'll be honest, this normally goes in a travel mug, not, uh, not a glass mug. But that's it. That's how quick you can do a coffee on its own. A proper latte. Now, something that is very different, you obviously, you have to get rid of your grounds manually, but so there's a bit of banging involved, which you didn't have to do with the Jura, and you have to wash this straight away. But, if you're just doing one coffee, that's the cleanup done. Now, I'm gonna let uh, Laura show you how she does a coffee. So she likes a bit more froth, in fact, I think Laura would have made benefit of the froth that's left in there. I'm not so fast on the amount of froth, so we'll show you how Laura makes a coffee. I've got to try it before we go to the next bit. It's good. It's much better than the Jura. It is. Okay, Laura, <laughs> you've been using the Breville for about five or six days now. Yeah, I have. Thoughts over the Jura? I love it. Um, it's much better. And I, well, I think. One big thing, so Laura had sort of gone off the milk that the Jura makes, and it's this milk system which really sets this apart from the Jura, and you've gone back to your 
frothy drink, yes, haven't you? I have. I have. I'm really enjoying it, actually. Yeah, so I guess this is a, a more traditional way of frothing milk, more like what you get in a cafe, where the Jura's sort of got a steam or air injection system, which works quickly and efficiently, but this, this, this can make much closer to a cafe quality. But it's not as consistent. Yeah, that is very true. Sometimes the Jura seems really affected by different milk types. Um, so I'm going to do my grind now. So um, another way you can do it is oh, getting it in the hole um, and then pushing it into place and then pushing it across once and that'll start the grind. Right. It's the way I like to do it. How you, have you, has it reminded you to change the grind size? Not yet. No. Not yet. Must be a lucky one. While it's doing that, I'm going to change it to a single shot because I'm weak. So I'm going to have it as a single shot. So that's all done. Nice tempt basket. I'm going to pop it in, push it across to the middle, put my glass in, press the glass. <laughs> the suspense. Yeah, when you're filming, it feels much longer. But when, when you're getting on with the day <laughs> and you're doing other things in the kitchen, this feels fast. Yeah. We'll see if it's going to have a different brew time. See, so oh, much quicker, but single shot, so you've got basically half the volume. It's also letting me know that the drip tray is getting a bit full, um, which is a nice little feature. It just pops up, lets you know it's time to clean. Do you think this is less maintenance than the Jura for you? Yeah, I definitely think so. Because I do feel like you're, um, I definitely think so. I feel like you're cleaning it less, uh, more frequently. Um, emptying this tray out, it doesn't lead to a lot of build up happening, um, which in the Jura, you're probably not needing to do that as frequently because um, it's not letting you know until much later in the day, in, in the week. That makes sense. Right, what are you going to do with the milk? So um, Laura does her milk differently. So I, I'm going to do it. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, I do the auto milk, which you guys have saw. What do you do? Um, I'm going to do manual milk. So to switch it to manual mode, you just pull it out. That switches it to manual mode. Nice and easy. Of course, I better get the milk ready. Cow juice. Probably just going to fill it up to just below the... Maximum line? Uh, yeah, just below the maximum line, probably just in line with this little um, line on the jug. And that'll be enough for me. Um, so I'm going to pop it in at an angle, press it to start. It does let you know to put it at an angle. And you still get the temperature display. So you, you've still got that security. You're not going to overheat or the milk's not going to be prepped. But this allows you to make much more foam. Or be in control of the foam, I should say. Yeah. Got a bit of a whirlpool going on here. There we go. So it's getting quite hot to touch. I'm going to let some air in. I'm not a barista. I watched a couple of videos. And I like mine about 63. So I'll stop it there. Good. So I can keep that moving. Get some bubbles out. Give that a bit of a wipe. It's letting me know to drop the steed one down so it can purge. Self-cleaning, do you like that? Um, and then, yeah, just gonna... Try and get a shot of this at least. Still working on the latte art, early days. So basically when you do it your way, you get a, a well, you get quite a lot more froth regardless of the automatic settings. And we did try, uh, I've tried changing the micro foam from five to eight it doesn't make a massive difference. Maybe, what do you think? A little bit, yeah, a little bit, a little bit but not, not a huge difference. I, yeah. 
can see the uh, I've, yeah, a bit I've been more drinking rough. mine but um, yeah look thoughts does it taste okay still <laughs> mm, delicious thank you for showing everyone how you use it thank you so before we get into the summary, uh, I just thought I'd touch on a few things that were a concern before I purchased it. A lot of people mentioned that the Breville quality, the way that things all feel are not that of a Dura. This feels better than my Dura Z9. Uh, everything's, it's tighter. Maybe it's because it's newer, we'll see how it ages, but it doesn't feel like a cheap machine. The finishing on the metal, uh, whatever coatings and stainless and all that sort of stuff that they've used is good. It is not cheap stuff. Um, there, at no point do I feel like I've got a cheap machine. I've used, I have used proper cafe machines before, and it's, there's obviously not the weight in it, but you still can't, it's heavy. It's not a, it's not a toy. It doesn't feel like a toy. The other thing that was a little bit of a concern was the size. We don't have a massive kitchen. We've actually pulled it out a little bit so it's in the light, but normally it sits back up against the wall and filling up the water and that sort of thing. The water jug is at the back and you do have a level through there. We've just been filling the water up through the front, so we don't need to pull the machine out for anything. It does have this little lever, which basically takes it off its um, stand, I guess, off its feet, and you can wheel it backwards and forwards relatively easily. For a small household kitchen, it works absolutely fine. And I guess it works in a big kitchen as well. The only thing that's been a bit of a shock to me in particular is this thing, banging the, uh, the pucks out. It's, it's loud and it does make a little bit of a mess. This machine, you do need to keep a cloth on hand. It's snuck out of the shot, but you keep a cloth on hand, you need to wipe the milk spout immediately. Uh, they recommend doing it as soon as possible to stop any buildup or scale or anything affecting this. Uh, we're probably a bit lazy with it, but it's been okay. And you just sort of wipe it down as you go. So when, you, when you're banging your puck out, just wipe it down as you go and your cleanup is done. Where again, with the Dura, you would make your coffees and then you'd have to take everything away and clean out the milk and all that sort of stuff. I think for a one-off coffee, this is definitely faster. If you're doing four or five coffees, this does take longer than a Jura or a fully automatic machine, but we're not doing that very often. It's one or two coffees at a time in our kitchen. All right, we better film a summary. I think I'm gonna try this, the puck sucker. <laughs> it's so loud and it splashes and bangs. Makes a real mess. But, right, thoughts on the machine. You've had it for a week. Any regrets on the money we've spent on it? Because we, this was a, this is the most expensive appliance we've ever bought, and we've literally had to go halves on it. So it's not just like a fun thing. We put a lot of thought into it, and we took the plunge. Yeah. Uh, luckily, our local retailers are the type where if you buy something and you really don't like it, they'll let you take it back. And we're not going. We're definitely going to keep it. No regrets. I don't miss the Jura at all. Yeah. What are your thoughts. I agree. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, I don't miss it at all. Um. It's the perfect machine for us. Yeah, I've been pretty impressed with that. I thought it was going to take longer to make coffees. It, it doesn't. Agreed, yeah. When I'm just doing one for myself, this is faster than the Jura. It's definitely nicer than the Jura. Whether that's because with the Juras being fully automatic, you sort of set them once and then you forget about them. Uh, we also get the, the Juras. The Jura that we had here was secondhand. It's actually 10 years old now. So I've got no complaints that it's broken. Uh, but I will try and fix it and it'll live on again. The, the thing is... I set the bean, I set the grind up, I set, I set that Jura up once. And every other person I know that's got an, a fully automatic machine that's a bit, little bit nerdy about coffee like I am, it's the same thing. You set it up once and then you forget about it. And coffee sort of fades in and out of goodness. And you'll have that odd moment where you have a coffee and go, oh, this is really nice. And then other times you want to go and buy a coffee somewhere. Yep. This is definitely, I guess not only the money, but we're less tempted to go to a cafe. It's so consistent. It's yeah. really good. Yeah, we are. We definitely have more coffee at home. Maybe because it's a new thing. I'll. Uh, I will update the comments below in say a month's time if there's anything weird that we've come up against or if we've stopped avoiding the cafes. But for now, I do like it. I do kind of. I still. We 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 buy cost effective coffee beans. Yeah. We're not going out there buying expensive boutique beans. Um, there is a local coffee bean to us called Campos or a coffee maker. Roaster. Um, Bean roaster. I do quite like the Campos coffee beans for black coffee. Uh, and I would like to try them on this, and I think we will mm -hmm. do that. Maybe I'll put that in the comments video. Yes. Uh, the, the video comments. But honestly, these cheap beans that we buy from Aldi, they taste quite nice. It's perfect. All right, guys. No complaints. You got any questions about it before you buy it? Let us know in the comments below, and I will try and get back to you as quickly as I can. If not, no regrets switching from a Jura. Thank you.